Good morning, Paul. Georgie from Allendale. It's August 30th, Thursday morning, and uh, we're waiting for the uh, USDA export sales numbers here. They're a bit delayed this morning, but uh, if we get them before the, uh, we're done here today, we'll, uh, we'll certainly give them to you. Otherwise, you'll have to follow us on uh, the Allendale Advisory Report. But uh, markets are mixed here this morning, kind of quiet overnight. Uh, corn showing a little bit of strength. It looked like uh, the the way that the corn was up to, beans down to, some spreading going on there uh, overnight. But the trade's got a lot uh, on its plate here tomorrow. And I think we're settling down uh, ahead of that and trying to get uh, – get things lined up. We have the Russian leaders meeting tomorrow and they're expected to discuss the exports and if they want to continue with exports or, or shut off exports because of the drought in Russia. That's going to be a factor that uh, we may get some information on tomorrow. We've also got uh, the Fed Chairman uh, Bernanke speaking in Jackson Hole, Wyoming tomorrow morning. Uh, it should be uh, at 9 o'clock uh, central time here in the in the uh, U.S., and we should be able to get those numbers. And that's everybody, uh, it seems to be, focused on announcement of a QE3. But as we get closer to that uh, speech, the uh, the feeling is, well, maybe he's not going to make any announcement about QE3, and that's getting people nervous. We've got uh, a lot of, uh, of that enthusiasm built into markets here in the equity markets and even in the, the grain markets that uh, – we could see some pullback if there is no uh, mention of QE3 tomorrow morning. Uh, we're also getting some uh, economic data uh, out of the, uh, Japan this morning. Uh, their retail sales slowed, showing a further slowing of uh, global economies. Uh, China's uh, economy is uh, continuing to uh, give us data that is not uh, supportive and not suggesting that they're ready to, to bounce back. So uh, those are facts that uh, are affecting the uh, the outside markets and also the psychology of trading. Uh, the grain markets yesterday with the big rally that we've seen in corn and beans and wheat, uh, open interest went down, which means that uh, people were getting out of positions rather than building positions on that rally. Uh, we've got Isaac uh, moving up the Mississippi uh, River uh, area that uh, should bring some well-needed moisture to uh, the Midwest, the central Midwest over and then into uh, the eastern part with uh, Indiana and Ohio getting rain here on uh, Sunday, Monday. And that uh, the question there is how much rain uh, will it and is it damaging uh, soybean crop in the, the Delta area? That's a uh, uh, big concern and certainly providing support to the uh, the soybean complex here as uh, there has been some reports of uh, 6, 10, uh, as much as 20 inches of rain down in the, uh, the uh, uh, Delta area. So uh, through the Midwest, anywhere from 2 to 4 inches is uh, what is expected at, at this point in time. So expect some sideways trading in the grains as we go into the uh, weekend, into Friday's news. We've also got a long weekend ahead of us, which is creating some uh, increased nervousness. Uh, we've got uh, next week uh, the EU uh, uh, central bank uh, leader is expected to make an announcement and uh, possibly give some more incentives for uh, uh loosening up the economy there to, to help support that economy. So that's uh, that's focusing uh, on the beginning of, uh, of next week. The uh, livestock markets, we've got a standoff in the cash cattle trade. Uh, 117, 118 is what the, the bids are. Asking is 122 to 123 in the south. Uh, still a standoff there. Expecting trade today probably around that 120 area, which would be steady with last week. We did see some trade yesterday in uh, the north at uh, 187, which would be uh, equal to, to last week's trade, but only a few had traded there. In the pork, uh, we've got cutout values uh, down 67 cents. Uh, we've got continued pressure on this cash hog market with uh, high uh, feed costs and, and the outlook uh, pretty dismal for the pork producer as we go forward here with high uh, meal prices, high corn prices. We're seeing some, uh, some liquidation there, and we're going into a week next week where it'll be a short production week 
that could uh, also continue to uh, weigh on these uh, cash hog prices and also continue to, to pour more meat supplies into the, uh, the system. There is a brighter spot for the hog uh, complex, though, as we go forward here and we get into the middle of September. Usually the demand for product picks up as the uh, uh, October is National Pork Month. There's some good featuring going on during that period of time and could improve the, uh, the uh, demand and uh, improve the, uh, the cutout values, which in turn should help uh, support cash prices a bit. So we've got a lot of things going on, a lot of reasons to stay in touch with Allendale. Also want to remind everybody, this is uh, we've got only two days left uh, today and tomorrow uh, for uh, the Allendale yield survey that we do every year. Uh, this, uh, we need your help. If you can uh, go to the website, fill out the uh, survey, and you haven't done it yet, please do so. Uh, if you uh, don't want to do that, just give us a call. You can uh, call us at 800-262-7538, and we'll, we'll work through the survey with you and uh, get the information in our, uh, in our database, and we'll have all these numbers for you on Tuesday. So uh, when we come back from the holiday, we'll give you the, uh, the survey results. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to call, uh, and we wish you a very successful trading day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Thank you.